Okay, the workshop will now come to order. We're going to start with the uh, reports from the board president. We have something that we'd like to read for all of you. We would like to take this opportunity to discuss the recently updated budget workshop schedule. It has come to our attention, <coughs> excuse me, to the district's attention that the budget will be enacted on Friday, March 22nd. There is a potential that our district will be receiving additional funding from the state in the final state budget. This information could be potentially change, could potentially change the outcome of our project of our projected 2013-2014 district budget. This information, coupled with the fact that we have received no new information since the last budget workshop held on February 21st at NFA Maine, led us to the decision to revisit our budget workshop schedule. The next budget workshop will be on April 4th at Meadow Hill from 6 to 8. This will allow the board to make an informed decision about the budget with the most updated and accurate information. As with the previous budget workshops, the last half hour will be reserved for public comment to take input from the public on suggestions on how to address the budget and the budget gap. In the addition, the board will hold a special meeting to allow for the public comment on the 2014 budget on April 9th at Meadow Hill at 6 p.m. The public comment portion will be for one hour. If you would like to participate in the public comment, it will be on the first come, first serve basis by contacting our district clerk. After receiving the public comments on April 9th, the board will have a special meeting on the following day, April 10th at Meadow Hill at 6 p.m. for the purpose of adopting the 2013-2014 district budget. Uh, the next thing on the President's agenda is a resolution to approve the revision to the school and library budget vote election calendar and the designation of polling places for May 21st, 2013. Any questions or discussion? <coughs> the, reason, the reason for the election change, the polling places in the city of Newburgh were redistricted as part of the Orange County uh, charter that got passed. So the Orange County Board of Elections redistricted the city of Newburgh. That reflects the revision to the change. Oh, there's no actual change in your polling place. Wherever you voted in the city of Newburgh last year, it will stay the same. It's just a technicality that it has to go out with legal notice that the district changed the budget. Uh, the budget. So wherever you voted last year, it will stay the same. Thank you. And the other, other thing on the president agenda is um, I'd like to turn it over to the attorney. We have questions on for discussion on Skyping for meetings. Okay, a question has been raised by the board regarding the ability of board members to attend meetings of the board through Skype or through other video conferencing. And uh, video conferencing can take a number of forms in terms of uh, technology. One of them is uh, Skype, which is a computer um, a way of communicating or, or um, being visibly present at a meeting. Under the open meetings law, video conferencing can be a legitimate way for board members to attend a meeting. Um, part of that uh, would be to announce the location of the board member, which would be a remote location from, for example, this meeting site, and to also indicate to the public that members of the public can be in attendance at the site where the remotely located board member might be. It could be in an office building, it could be um, in someone's library in their home. Um, so you would have to allow the public the same access to the remote location with notice as to where that board member would be located. Um, so it is lawful to do that. Um, there is an opinion, a letter from the Committee on Open Government about Skype itself. Um, I have actually attended a meeting where someone Skyped in. Um, I think it would be very difficult for more than one board member to use that particular technology to be attending a meeting because I don't know how you would face the um, computers uh, to each other so that they can talk to each other um, at the meeting. Um, so that, that's the general background of the ability to attend the meeting by Skype. Um, I can say from my personal experience that the two-dimensional person did not have the affect of someone being present in 3D who could be 
seen, who could be animated, who can speak um, the way they want to speak with whatever passion they put behind their speaking when meeting together. And I, I think also it is not as functional in terms of um, a deliberative process for a board to be at a remote location. So I would view it as something to do on the occasion rather than as a means of participating regularly. Questions? Hello, board members. What about in reference to executive session? How would that work with Skype in, in, from a remote location and, and people that may be allowed there? and then vote, say voting afterwards, after the discussion there? Um, the person at the remote location um, would have to excuse the people to another location where there would then be privacy, and then after the executive session, invite the people back into the location uh, where the board member is uh, present. Judy? No? I just said it sounds like way too much trouble. Mm -hmm. Is there an extra cost involved? Or any cost involved? Um, I don't think there's a cost involved in using Skype unless there's some application cost for the person who, um, who has Skype. Anyone else? Okay. Discussion? You want to take a consensus now? We have no more questions. This, uh, this is for next week. That would be great. Yeah, we've had a request for Mr. Boston to teleconference in at the March 19th meeting. We need to get more approval for that. We can set that up and that's okay by the board. So the community would be privy to that back and forth as well. Right, um, so if it is approved, um, you're going to have to announce his location, invite the public to be present at his location, and then if there is executive session, he's going to have to um, arrange for the privacy of his participation in the executive session. And what about walk-in resolutions? Pardon me? What about walk-in resolutions? Um, a walk-in resolution, uh, you, would, you would have to read it to him so that he could understand what it is and then vote on it. Mark? Well, I think we're making a decision more than just Mr. Lawson for next week. I mean, that's what you have to look at. What in the future do you want to be doing? Uh, and it should be what's, what's appropriate. Thank you. Good point. Or David, yeah, my only other comment is you could do something for the one event right now by resolution and then address it more generally by policy later on. Okay. Sue? Yeah, I would just like to Do you need to do that before next week then? No, no, by, by resolution you can authorize what would happen next week. Um, policy would be enduring, you know, uh, for the future, and if it's reissued at next year's reorg meeting, it would be the next year as well. And just a question, is this the first time that we've ever done this? Yes, my knowledge.
Do we need a resolution now, then? Um, is this, is this uh, a voting meeting? Next week is the voting meeting. You, you can, um, okay, so you're not doing any voting at, at tonight's meeting? I think we yeah. have one. How will you announce here yeah, tonight? It's announced as workshop. Okay, so you, you can um, add a resolution to, to this, uh, to vote on today. Okay, I'd like to add a resolution to vote on allowing Skyping for next week. So moved. Questions and comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? No. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokoff? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Now I'd like to pass or vote on the resolution that we just added. I have a motion. Vote so moved. Second. Questions, comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? No. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokoff? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. I'm going to now turn it over to the superintendent of schools. Thank you, Madam President. This evening we have two presentations. The first presentation by Terry Damon and our capital projects. Everyone should have received a copy of our update for March. I'm going to refer to some of the items here generally and then talk more specifically about a couple of the items at the back of our update. Over the course of the last month or since the last meeting, the our work has continued at Gibney, Gibney Ave and the B-Wing. Uh, furniture was delivered. I walked that area this afternoon. Uh, phones are being placed. The direction that was given to the project team is to have that space 100% uh, complete and turned over to the district. So if they had, um, choose to use that space, it will be available starting on April 1st. Um, with regard to the other architects' updates, we are continuing our work on closeout. I brought uh, one of the binders with me tonight. You also notice there are two more binders over at Andy's um, location. Um, over the course of the next couple of months, and as you'll see in each one of the architects' updates, our goal is to get the closeout binders in and get things wrapped up. Um, I know they're a little bit later than they hoped they would be. Our goal originally was to try to be wrapped up by the end of January, February. We're now gonna take advantage of the spring break and really focus on wrapping things up during that week. Uh, you can uh, read through each of the architect's updates. There are some good photos of the B-Wing completion over at GAMS. You'll notice in this month's update there are no change orders this month. Um, that will change next month as we zero in on our closeout. There are some things that we will be uh, bringing forward as we look to close out each of these projects. After the tab that says there are no change orders, there are draft copies of the budget revisions for your information. Um, you'll notice on the first one, which is the revisions for the $50 million referendum, at the very bottom, there's a total that are the savings that are being moved from the 50 into the projects that remain in the 76.5. And on the draft of the revisions for the 76.5, you'll see four areas that are highlighted in yellow. Those are the areas that the savings has, has been reallocated to at this point. Uh, you'll notice the first category are the new projects that we added at NFA main campus. Uh, the second category are those new projects that we added at Kidney Avenue. And then there are modifications to two existing projects, Foster Town and Heritage. Any questions there can be directed to the superintendent's office and then we would look to uh, finalize this and bring this back before the board for action in April. 
The final tab includes three proposals that have been received from the architects, one from each of the architects. Um, this is in response to a presentation that was made at a prior meeting. Uh, we've asked each of the architects to present a proposal that would uh, provide for some initial design work to be done with regard to modifying uh, building vestibules to upgrade building access and security at all your buildings. Um, we felt this was the best approach so we could look to try to finalize some concepts and we could have the architects prepare estimates. Their fees are typically based upon our percentage of the construction cost. So this initial proposal would be to work <coughs> with them, to have them interface with the district to finalize the concepts that we would have estimates prepared for. Um, one example of something that we would want to discuss as a part of this project, south, for example, the main entrance is not handicap accessible. As compared to north, where you have a handicap ramp that comes to the main entrance at north, you do have handicap accessibility at south at the lower level, which is also an entrance. That's the location of your elevators. So that building is compliant in terms of handicap accessibility. But that's a building that we would want to evaluate with the district's input. If we were going to put a secured vestibule in that building, would it go at the main entrance? And if so, that would require the incorporation of a ramp. Or would it be acceptable to put that at the lower entrance and simply utilize the existing elevators? So there are some things that we need to work through with the district to come up with a concept plan that seems to be the most appropriate. Those are the kinds of discussions that we would have, and then we would come back to the board um, once these were approved and once this work was authorized to proceed. And these are also provided this evening for your information. They're not intended to be um, put before you for action until there's further discussion with regard to funding source for uh, building access and security upgrades. We're going to have a general update on the past couple of weeks. Any questions? Mr. Damon? I just have uh, number one, uh, Terry, I know we talked about uh, closeouts and uh, punch lists, and I'm still waiting, as I think we all are. The 2010 punch list is still not complete. On which project? Uh, I know there's one item on uh, getting the uh, site work. Summer, summer 2010 work. Uh, under uh, Menuda. There's a... There's two things there that are not completed. There's a detectable warning track that's supposed to be installed by the district, and that's the last piece, I think, that remains there. What's okay. the second? Get so, to... you're telling me that everybody then, all the subcontractors from 2010 work have been paid? Yes. Okay. Yes. Everybody's been paid. Everybody's been paid. Yes. This is an item that we had agreed previously was going to be done in-house. Okay. And the architect, um, before they issued their substantial completion notification, which goes to the state, wanted to have this last piece done. So that's something that, that um, we intend to get done. And if the weather is appropriate, we get that done during the spring break. Okay. And then the, um, okay. But no, no funds are being withheld on that. Good. Okay. Any more questions? Thank you, Mr. Dean. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. The second presentation of the evening is by Mrs. Lisa Vaughn, Principal of Horizon on the Hudson School, who will share with the board the progress of the various programs at the school, including the International Baccalaureate Program. Mrs. Vaughn is accompanied by several members of the Horizon School community, including staff and parents. Lisa, so yours. by first thanking the board for the opportunity to present to you some of the wonderful programs that are happening at Horizons on the Hudson. And without further ado, I'll turn over to our teachers who 
we're going to do the presentation tonight. Mr. William Antonelli, fourth grade integrated code teacher. Mr. Joe Catania, our computer tech specialist at Horizons. And Mr. David Brown, our international Latin coordinator. back, I believe the, uh, the board president asked uh, for, to hear from various schools uh, throughout the year, so here we are. Um, okay, so we're here to um, highlight the uh, International Baccalaureate uh, Program. Uh, I know some, uh, some of the newer board members, um, this information might, uh, might be new, some of the more seasoned board members may have uh, heard some of this already. Uh, but IB is basically an inquiry-based uh, inquiry uh, learning. It's very heavy on character ed. Um, Concept-driven instruction, uh, very, very strong in international mindedness. Um, creating learners that, that take a personal responsibility in their learning. Um, and it's for all types of learners. Uh, one of the uh, misconceptions about the IB program is that it's uh, only for certain kids, uh, honors kids, or in our case, the accelerated kids. Um, but that, is, that couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, the IB program uh, is for every type of learner in the building. Uh, and the IB is uh, backed up by decades of research. Uh, the uh, first part of the IB program, uh, the diploma, started in the late 1960s. Uh, this is just an example of the curriculum model for the PYP, um, which is the primary years program. And this is a, this is a chart just showing uh, how the IB has grown just in the past five years, especially uh, the PYP. Uh, from two, 2008 to 2013, there's been 160 almost 2% uh, growth in the IB. Um, the middle years program uh, has also been growing uh, quite well. Uh, the DP program continues to grow, uh, but not at the rate of the other two. Um, again, the DP has been around for as long as I have, actually. Uh, just a little background on the Common Core standards, because the two uh, do tie in. Uh, the Common Core uh, was adopted by the New York Board of Regents in January 2011. Uh, the alignment started uh, the following year. And this year, uh, full implementation of the Common Core uh, is expected. Uh, and of course, we all know that the ultimate goal is to have all of our students uh, college and career ready. So what many people might not know is that, uh, the relationship between Common Core and the International Baccalaureate. Um, the IB was one of uh, five sets that the Common Core uh, helped uh, gauge itself uh, to make sure that it was rigorous enough. Okay. Uh, it's uh, recognized by uh, thousands of uh, United States universities, including Yale, Harvard, Princeton. Um, it's excellent uh, preparation uh, for college. Uh, in the packets that I handed out, there are uh, a couple of articles from schools across the United States that talk about the uh, college preparation of their students in the IB. Okay. And there's lots of um, research out there that shows just uh, what type of uh, students uh, IB kids are, um, how they outperform uh, Non-IB students in admission rate, graduation, grade point average, and uh, college completion. Uh, here are the uh, all four uh, curriculum models. We have the PYP, which was in yellow, the middle years, the diploma program in blue, and the purple one to the far right uh, is their newest program. It's a uh, career-related certificate for the high school students who. Uh, maybe in more uh, tech-heavy um, or, or career-based uh, 
classes, but the uh, career-related certificate allows them uh, to uh, take a few of the IB courses as well and still get an IB certificate. So Horizons, IB, and the Common Core, um, we as a school started looking at the IB in 2007. Uh, we sent a small team of about seven or eight teachers uh, and one of our administrators uh, to a training to ex uh, explore the idea. We started our official candidacy in 2008, okay? and we were proudly authorized uh, in August of 2011. Um, in July 2011, um, our staff began aligning uh, the units that we had written uh, with the Common Core. So before we even became uh, authorized, and before the Common Core uh, were mandated uh, to be taught in schools, we had already started to work to align uh, what we had been doing the past four years with what we knew was coming. Um, in October 2012, um, it was a proud moment for us during one of the trainings uh, in this room, Dr. Heidi Hayes Jacobs, um, who uh, was here for uh, three different trainings on curriculum mapping, when she found out that there was a international baccalaureate school in the district, she stated that we were about three years ahead of the process just because uh, we were IB. I'm just proud of this. This is our certificate that proves that we're authorized. <laughs> so actually made Christmas cards of it um, here. <laughs> um, this is our program of inquiry. Um, and when I talk about um, units of inquiry, uh, each one of those little slips of paper, there's, um, there's six on a grade level. So we have 36 units all together. Um, so each one of those um, stand for uh, about a four to six week uh, unit, which can encompass all subject areas. And one of the things that I'd like to make sure I get across is that this, this is a, a journey. I, uh, we spent three years in our candidacy. Uh, we're five years into the, the journey now. Um, there's an evaluation in your third year, so that's what we're looking forward to uh, in the fall of 2014. And then every five years, International Baccalaureate comes in and does another evaluation, which is one of the, uh, the fine things about the organization and, and program itself is they are constantly monitoring uh, the, uh, the schools that, uh, that hold the world school uh, name. Right? Um, and if you are not upholding their standards, uh, they will pull uh, your authorization. So it's a continuous cycle of, of growth, reflecting on what you do, uh, evaluating what you've done, and then continue the improvement and continue the growth. You know, in, and in that, they're going to kill me for putting this up here, but. Um, <laughs> Involved in that in that growth is is constant um, professional development. Um, now I can say that, that the bulk of the investment in the IB program has already been made by the district um, when all the teachers were trained uh, initially a few years back. Um, so then, other than the annual uh, fee, which is less than eight thousand um, dollars, and training any new staff that happens to come in. Uh, we, we, we do need to send a, a few staff members uh, every year or two to additional training, uh, but unlike the level one training, uh, level two and level three can be turnkey. So Ms. Krakalici to the left and Ms. Garcia to the right, uh, they recently attended the uh, level three in New York about concept-based learning. And, and I wanted to highlight this because uh, these were two hardworking, excited teachers at the beginning of the process. Um, but I have to tell you, and Ms. Garcia is here, um, it was an hour and a half into the, the training that Friday morning, and she was already texting me. Okay? She was so enthusiastic um, that you know, she couldn't wait to get back to the building and continue to improve uh, on what we've already done. And I'd also like to say the, the trainer that they both had, um, who was a teacher in Florida, um, he was so impressed with the units that Kelly and Conchetta brought with them. Uh, 
work that Horizons had been doing the past couple of years. He was so impressed that he asked if uh, we could send him uh, an example or two of our units so he could take uh, it with him. He was going to do another training in Colombia, South America. So he wanted to bring uh, some of our work uh, with him to show his exemplars. I know it's all about data uh, and scores. Um, this is just something uh, current. Um, the, the Terra Novas uh, that were taken this year, um, after we looked at all the numbers, uh, we're ranking fifth out of the nine schools. Um, I know one of the things that we often hear with the International Baccalaureate is if it's, you know, if it's that good, you know, why aren't your scores better? Um, our scores have been improving uh, and our standing in the district uh, has gotten better and better um, each year. I know that the school accountability, um, we rank fourth uh, out of the nine schools, um, actually fourth out of the entire district. Um, and we are going to continue to work on this number um, you know, as we go on. Mr. Catania has something to add. We've, we've been using this, we just started this year using a couple of uh, high quality research based uh, software programs. Um, this one in particular, System 44, we're, we're piloting really in the district. It's um, something that we're rolling out. We've had the teachers trained and it's an adaptive software. It has a track history of uh, improving uh, scores. And uh, another one, and that's for language arts, another one that we're using is this one here, Fast Math, uh, Next Generation is another piece of software that we're, uh, the building has adopted that we're using um, to improve uh, back fluency in addition to subtraction. <coughs> division, we've only been using this for uh, a little over a month and the improvements we've seen are remarkable. Um, already utilizes the system that we use to uh, administer the SRI exam. So <coughs> teachers are familiar with the, the reporting system and there's uh, very powerful reports that are generated <coughs> that go along with that. So that's just one way that we're working to build and improve those scores using technology. Um, and these are just a few pictures that I'd like to speak to about what progress looks like in our school. This was an event that actually takes place every year um, on the International Day of Peace. It takes place on September 21st, I believe. And it's just a way for the, the whole school to recognize peace and also a good uh, opportunity for teachers to then segue and, and use that as uh, a teaching point to talk about not only peace around the world, but peace in the Uber community as well as in the school community. This is a photo of our IB night where the students present their exhibition projects. And what exhibition really is, is it's really a significant event in the lives of our fifth grade students. It marks the transition from the primary years program, which is basically the elementary school, to the middle school uh, program. And what the students do is they work in groups to um, create a collaborative inquiry project with the help of um, some special area teachers who serve as mentors. And, um, the students choose a real life problem that affects them and they um, create a plan of action to address it. And then parents can come on this night and uh, with their families and see the hard work that the students put forth. This is actually a picture of my classroom and uh, two of my students are sharing the strategies that they use for a fraction word problem that involved the um, fair distribution of brownies among students. And uh, this kind of collaboration, by the way, where is all over our school, the students working together on uh, inquiry using, using manipulatives and um, basically just to dive deeper into the more conceptual understanding versus the traditional methods of teaching and learning, um, which actually allows them to tackle problems with greater rigor and really understand the math behind it, which is actually what the Common Core and IB require. And this is another picture of students in my class who are working together on a project. And uh, this is actually on the uh, planet Neptune. And they actually have to present this to the class. And I feel like this also gives them a good opportunity to speak uh, amongst their peers, which is a common core standard and also something that's heavily uh, required in IB. And the final picture of them working together also, I think I feel like it really 
uh, allows them to feel more comfortable when they can work with small groups as opposed to a whole class. Because some students are really shy, but when they get together with these uh, other kids that are their same age, they really get to work uh, collaboratively with them on things, and they're not as shy when they're speaking to their classmates as they are when speaking to the whole. So I really think this is a valuable tool for them, as opposed to the, the traditional methods of direct instruction with the teacher standing in front of the room. These students are have engaged in guided inquiry and really uh, enjoy it. And also, they get to talk to each other, which they love that too. This is also an example. Um, you can tell by the book that they're using. Um, they're working on one of the um, not one of the IB units, but they're working on one of the modules uh, uh, put up by the state, uh, one of the EL, ELA modules. Um, and interestingly enough, um, when I went to the training for that last August, um, and I sat through the uh, ELA 3, 4, and 5, uh, the more I learned about the units that the state uh, was uh, putting up for everyone to use, um, it just smelled like IB. And after uh, some little inquiry of my own, uh, talking to some of the presenters, um, the company that wrote the modules for the state, Expeditionary Learning, they are modeled after the International Baccalaureate Schools. This is actually one of my favorite slides, um, and probably one of my favorite moments this year. I know we talk a lot about test scores, and we all know how important they are, um, but this is an example of how our character ed is changing this as our students. Um, these were, uh, I may have mentioned this a few weeks ago. Uh, these two students at the beginning of the year, uh, as a fifth grader and a third grader, um, taking it upon themselves on a bus, uh, when they witnessed a kindergarten student being bullied, right, they took it upon themselves to put a stop to the bullying. And they did it in the most polite and respectful manner. Right? Um, this, you know, the, the, the character read, the, the language that we use, um, you know, this is something that the students hear uh, throughout their time at Horizons, from kindergarten all the way uh, through fifth grade. Um, so by the time they uh, get to be the upperclassmen, um, they are really uh, becoming and, and living uh, those character traits. This is a, uh, one of our bulletin boards in our school. This is recognizing uh, some students in our school that actually won first prize. Three of these girls won first prize at the District Day of Writing uh, this past uh, fall. The, uh, the, the topic was tolerance, which is one of our attitudes of our IB um, program. The other girl actually won second prize of, of the students in the district. So this just speaks to the excellence that we uh, produce in writing. Um, and this is, you know, just us showcasing our students, and these students feel very proud to have their pictures up in the, in the hallways when other students look at it, and you know they strive to have the same thing. Uh, one, of, one of the uh, programs that we have at Horizons is uh, video conferencing. We, we do about ten to twenty with NASA a year using uh, video conferencing equipment. This is just a, a picture that happened uh, this fall where a second grade class got to actually talk to those astronauts while they were in space on uh, the space station. So it was a really good opportunity that they were providing that fit right into uh, their unit of inquiry that they were participating in in the classroom. So I was able to tie in this video conference. And we have to ask those questions and, and get answers in real time. This is really amazing. And this is, this is another class also having one, and you can just see that the kids uh, really enjoy the video conferencing that we do in the building, and they uh, participate, um, and they cannot wait to do it again. And it really gives us a great opportunity so to, to uh, have their questions answered by some of these experts um, that are actually located in different uh, space centers all over the United States. And then one of the other um, video conferencing opportunities we provide is called Read Around the Planet, and this connects uh, our teachers um, to students around the country and around the globe. So that ties in with our uh, global mindedness that we have with the uh, IB program. And we had 
nine or ten at least classrooms, um, and some of them combined, so there might have been 14 or so that, that participated in this. Um, and this is just uh, an hour long literacy based activity back and forth. And this was one um, that Mr. Antonelli participated in here, his, his class, and this is the other class here, and uh, the other class was in Ghana. Yeah, and my, my students were amazed at the similarities that they found amongst themselves and the students who were from Ghana who actually do the same kind of things that, that they do, and it really speaks to our school and uh, our philosophy that we have to be internationally minded and show teaching tolerance, and you know, the students really can, can see that even though they're from a faraway place, they're really very similar. They're people too, they're, they do the same things. So I'm looking back, a teacher just telling the student that may, may go in, may go out, but actually seeing and, and talking to other students was just really an amazing experience, not for my students only, but for me as well, to, to you know, interact with students from another country like that. Yeah, I, mean, I, th yeah, I, I think we, you know, we, we talk about multiculturalism so much and, and glo you know, global awareness, um, but for these kids in the International Baccalaureate program, um, with experiences like this, and Mr. Catan is being extremely modest, um, the work that he's been able to do uh, with our technology and the technology that he's brought to us, which has only enhanced uh, the, uh, all the programs in the building. Um, it's just, it, it's captivating our kids and it's making it so much more, so much more real. And in the age of technology, I mean, this is the way we have to go these days. That's how kids learn. So if you need some help Skyping in some of your meetings, I'm sure some of our, some of our fourth graders can come in and give you a little tutorial. Uh, one of the other um, ways that we're using technology uh, in our building, we, we produce a, it's a student produced morning news show. Uh, the students set up a high definition video camera every morning. They connect all the wires, connect it to our computer network, and that also connects it to um, televisions which we have in all the classrooms and uh, every morning we do our daily announcements um, so they're they're doing that public speaking on a regular <laughs> basis um, and it's completely student run I mean I, I interview and, and get the kids on on uh, the team for it but uh, they they run the show themselves and um, and they love it and you can see they're, they're going over notes and what they're going to say for the morning has really engaged not only the students who are participating in this, but the whole building now uh, really pays attention to the uh, morning announcements. Um, this is a picture of one of our kindergarten teachers and her class in the um, Read Lab. And just wanted to be noted that these students, even this young, are immersed in the Ivy language and the, the attitudes that we, we, hope to, uh, we hope to show in our school. And it's consistent throughout each grade level. So it's, there's, there's not a gap at all between kindergarten or even pre-K all the way through fifth grade. So they really are, they really you know, take ownership of this program and these attitudes and they really try to demonstrate that as you saw with the bullying uh, prevention slide that we showed earlier. Those kids really buy into this um, philosophy and really take ownership of it. And it starts that young. And then uh, as I'm sure most of you know, uh, I know Judy Kennedy, she came and actually came to our kindergarten classes and she spoke about the importance of rules and it just happened that those kindergartners were studying about the importance of rules in our community um, in one of their IB units which is actually one of um, six transdisciplinary themes that students around the country in IB schools will be studying this year so the mayor was nice enough to come in and you know students really feel like she connected with them and it was really a nice opportunity and experience for them. Um, These were the, um, the summer readers and I believe we had uh, 60, almost 70 students participate um, in the, the summer reading program uh, this, this past year. And uh, really, uh, just like to highlight these students giving them certificates and you know, having them on for a picture, and just showing them that their work means something and it's not just <coughs> another paper on a desk. It's really um, a way for us to recognize their efforts that they've done and also a way to incorporate the learner uh, profile of being balanced, of balancing you know, your summertime where you want to go outside and play, but you also have to be diligent and work, you know, and balance your time wisely. So it's a way for us to tie in that learner profile as well. And that was not required of them, it was suggested. So it was nice to see so many students participate. And this final picture is just a uh, snapshot of the breakfast with the principal. It's something that we do every year. 
where parents and families are invited to come in and interact with um, school personnel, the administration, um, the teachers, to um, health office professionals, cafeteria uh, workers, everybody that is in the, in the whole school gets to be involved in this. And uh, I really think the families connect with the school personnel because it's uh, much more of an informal conversation as opposed to a you know formal teacher parent teacher conversation that you have. So. Um, the parents love it, the teachers, the students, everybody enjoys it, and it's just a nice way to uh, kind of be like a big family, you know, in one big place. And that's another way our school has been improving, too. The, the amount of parent participation uh, has just uh, grown in recent years. So, um, this was a book uh, that I believe I got from Mr. Forget, uh last year. Um, very interesting read. It talks about um, changing culture uh, in a school building or really in, in a workforce. Um, and you know, it, it takes a, a lot of time, a lot of teamwork, and, and perseverance. Uh, changing culture, just something that we're hearing about regularly uh, in, the, in the field of education. But this is something that takes a lot of time. Uh, there are no quick fixes. Um, it just takes time and, and hard work. Um, and with your help and your support, we've been, uh, we've been at this for the past five, six years. Um, and we look forward to uh, continuing uh, improving the culture in our building, improving our, our, uh, our school, our students, all of it. And again, we couldn't, we couldn't have done it without your support. Um, so we look forward to that support continuing. Um, <laughs> So we applaud you uh, for that. But really, the, and the best way for you to see how the International Baccalaureate, the accelerated program, our technology, the best way for you to see how it's improving uh, Horizons is for you to come down. Um, I know I've, I've seen some of you um, uh, in my running around. Um, you know, it, just please, anytime, uh, come down, see what the kids are doing. Talk to the kids. They are very, uh, very used to. Uh, visitors coming in, asking them what they're learning, why they're learning it. Um, it's quite impressive. That's what I wanted to say. Open invitation. <laughs> Open invitation. Please come. Come and visit us. Thank you. Uh, I just want to also apologize for the technology. This presentation was supposed to be all cohesive and very nice, but just with the projector and the different computer, it didn't work out. But you know, we adapted and changed and managed. And, <laughs> That was a great presentation. Does the board have any questions? Is there a way to get a copy of the PowerPoint? Um, and Mr. Catania could probably speak to this better. I'm still, I would rock flip charts and um, <laughs> a poem or something. But the, the, Prezi, the, the, the Prezi presentation, um, it doesn't really lend itself to uh, like a PowerPoint when you run them off. Am I correct? You can actually say you can download it on OSP. Yeah, quick path. Yeah. Let's see. I can email it. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else have any questions? Yes. Mr. Wilson. What is the racial breakdown in the school? Racial breakdown? We're at, I believe we're at. Uh, 76% African-American, about, uh, I want to say 15% Hispanic, um, I want to say about 8% white and other, approximately. And this program is strictly voluntary? This program is for each and every student in the building. By me? This program is for each and every student in the building. Each student is in the building. Each and every student in the building. Every single student. It's not voluntary. I mean, if they didn't want to be in it, but it's no, every student is an IB student. Every student gets the IB curriculum. It's how we teach each and every day.
Any other questions? Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is um, discussion assistant superintendent student intervention and support services. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Um, before you, um, you'll find in your packet the recommendations uh, for the board for consideration uh, that come from the Committee on Special Education and the Committee on Preschool Special Education. And I'd like to walk you through um, those recommendations. Um, there's a total of 34 students that were determined eligible for special education supports and services in the month of February. Of those, of those 34 students, 21 are preschool students with disabilities that have met eligibility requirements and have been recommended for programs and services. Those programs and services include nine that are recommended for itinerant uh, speech and language services only, uh, one for itinerant occupational therapy only, one for itinerant counseling therapy only, and 10 that are recommended uh, for approved special education preschool programs uh, in special class settings with related services. In addition, uh, there's a total of 13 school-age students with disabilities that were determined eligible for special education supports and services in the month of February, either through initial referrals or they were transfers into the district. And of those students, there are three students uh, that are initial determinations for eligibility for special education. Five of those students are transfer students with interim IEPs. Five of them are uh, in re requested reviews who are transfer students that were previously interim IEPs and are, not, are now uh, placed with an initial district IEP. And one of them is a requested review from a transfer student uh, that, is, that is pending placement. Uh, of the recommendations before you in your packet, you'll find that one of the students is recommended for related services only. Two of them are recommended for resource room. Five of them are recommended for integrated co-teaching services. Three are recommended for special class placements within the district. <coughs> one of them is recommended for special class placement out in out of district programming and one of them is a student still pending uh, a, a placement out of district. Aside from the initial and transfer students, we also, also uh, included in your packet are nine students that had existing IEPs for the district that occurred as an amendment no meeting required. The, and there were 26 requested reviews and program reviews that were also conducted that included adjustments to the existing IEPs. Those are all of the, uh, what you'll find is the Board of Education uh, copy of the IEP for your consideration. I'd also like to just take a moment to review some year-to-date information. Um, as you'll see uh, from the cumulative uh, across the months from September uh, through the end of February, we have as a special education department received 118 requests for initial referrals. 90 students have transferred into our district with an existing IEP. And so those uh, total 208 meetings that were required for consideration and approval. And of those, to date, 155 of those students have had CSE meetings that were conducted and IEPs and programs that were recommended. We're still working on, and there are 53 uh, student that are, students that are in the process of initial or transfer students to be, to be met on by the committee. The delay in that are for a variety of reasons. Questions? Yes. The, the, the students that are on suspension, are, are they getting uh, two hours of home, of, of home teaching, or are they getting, i.e., are the students that are suspended with disability, do they get more time on that? So of the, of the students that were suspended in this month for out of, out of school suspensions, they were, for the time period of their suspension, um, a recommended and arranged for uh, home instruction during that, period of, during that period of suspension. 
I don't have the specific data in front of me, but can, can look into it for you yeah. as far as how many of those students um, had, had received those, those services. I can also tell you in addition to the 42 students that, were, that had students with disabilities yeah. that had uh, an out of school suspension for the month of, of February, 10 of those students were students who had a five day suspension um, and six, six of those 10 uh, were out of school, were out of school suspensions for five days, for a period of five days, pending a superintendent's hearing and a manifestation hearing. So those were for significant disciplinary con conduct. Okay, I think what I'm asking, yeah. if those kids who are suspended, special ed students are suspended, do they have an IEP that would extend their time on task more than two hours a day. Would it be five? Is it possible? I would have to look into that. I know that the that they, we are required to provide for those short term suspensions the provision of home instruction as we would for any student. Um, and so let me I will look into that again. Yes. Thank you. Hi. The question uh, I have is this month um, detailed listing of, of, of the students and what their recommended service. They took out the evaluators, which we had for a couple of months. Is there any reason why the evaluators for these programs are, are taken out of all of these? No, because the, the, the copy of the report is the, the Board of Ed copy that's run off of IEP Direct. Um, yeah, but the last two months, we did get all the evaluators on, on each one of these mm -hmm. students. And, and I, I had some questions about that. Now, there's none here on any of these. I'll look into that. I, it's not a, not a particular. I asked them if the reports were run as more of a summary report. Mm -hmm. Mr. Gordon? Did you want to say something? No, just, just clarification. Are you looking for the names of people that conducted the evaluations? Yeah, we've students? gotten that the past couple of months. The names and the companies and the schools that did the evaluations were listed on every single one of those. Right. Okay. In the case of uh, preschool evals, I know for sure. Well, it was, it was all. It was all. It was all. Yeah. I'll need to look into it. Are you, are you saying it shouldn't have been there, or? I, okay. I don't, okay. I don't I have the answer. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll wait, I'll certainly wait for the answer. I don't have an answer either okay. way. I know that we ran the same type of report from last month to this month. I, I think the lawyer is looking to. <laughs> Let me say, that's. Yes, please. The information you have shows the participants who were at the CSC meeting. Some of them may be evaluators. Some of them are not evaluators. Uh, the law doesn't require that board members review the names of the evaluators. Uh, the summary information that you have is typical of information that board members get about IEP placements. Um, certainly, you have the right to review more if you desire to review more. Okay, but did, did you know what my questions were the last couple of months in regards to that? My, my, my reason I brought up the evaluators is because I believe some of them were the ones that were going to be providing the services to the students, and we were paying them to do that. So that was my concern, and that's why I brought it up, and now it's on my interests. There, there, it does say on the bottom, participants. So are you looking for something no, other than that? Not, that's not what was there. I don't have last month's uh, with me. Uh, okay. So we have there's whatever the child is evaluated, what is there. Who, when, and why. So you'll get that information first? Yes. Thank you. Any other questions?
Thank you. Next on our agenda is the Executive Director for Curriculum and Instruction. I'm going to fill in for Dr. Shanahan tonight. I'll try and do my best here. Um, the first three items on, on the agenda for this evening for your consideration next week will all relate to the School Innovation Fund grant at Temple Hill Academy. Um, item A is a resolution to authorize the partnership with the Boys and Girls Club of um, Newburgh at Glen Pine Center to provide after school uh, programs and summer programs for our students at Temple Hill. Questions, anyone? So this is the turnaround grant for Temple Hill. So the funding source for this is Title I school improvement money. Um, so this is the two and a half year grant. This is different from the 21st century uh, extended day program and the extended uh, extended day school violence prevention grant. They're, they're all separate. Um, but it is an, it's an extended day program specifically for the Temple Hill students provided by Boys and Girls Club, summer and after school. The school innovation fund uh, was a grant that we wrote as a district. We had to uh, identify partners that we would work with to implement this grant. Um, and as you're going to see as we go through here, the partners that we identified were the Glenn Hines uh, program, uh, Mount St. Mary College with two specific professors from there, and the Greater Newburgh Hudson Valley Health um, Partnership that we have created as well. So we have three uh, outside partners working with us because the whole approach of this is community school, trying to develop the, the anchor of Temple Hill as the, 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 um, the focus of uh, the community. So it's extended day, it's bringing in health services, uh, wellness services, and then an academic uh, program into the core program during the day. Is this your first contract with us? Boys and girls. Boys and girls? Yeah. Um, I don't believe so. They, they have an existing relationship with us. We, we've got a very strong relationship with them. Uh, they, they support us, I believe, through the 21st Century Grant as well. Um, they're, they're, um, I'm not sure what the other uh, funding streams are, but uh, they've had a long-standing relationship with the district providing after school programs. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Item B, again, comes from the School Innovation Fund Grant. It's to uh, execute the agreement with Dr. D. Burlinghoff from uh, Mount St. Mary College to provide professional development at Temple Hill Academy. Um, Dr. Burlinghoff's contract will be uh, mostly for the first year, and when we get to Resolution C, Dr. Miller will be for the second year. Questions, anyone? Judy? So $116,000 for the first year? Uh, the, the contract goes for a two-year period. They'll be doing um, professional development in February, in the fall and in the spring, but they will also be on-site three days a week as they go through the year. So they'll be embedding the uh, learning strategies, content enhancement strategies, and supporting our coaches to implement the gym night instructional coach model on-site. So th this says that uh, Dr. D. Burlinghoff, $116,000. So if that's only the first year. That's the contract for Dr. Burlinghoff. I'll put for, my name in. I'm sorry, that's the contract for Dr. Burlinghoff for the two and a half year period. However, most of her work will be done during the first year of the implementation of the grant. The second year, she will probably back off a little bit and Dr. Miller will be on site three days a week in the school doing that particular work. And then they do the program over the summer as well. So it's during the year summer, 
um, and then uh, professional development opportunities beyond what they're doing during the day. It is a grant funding. It is. It's the school. It, it, this is this is because Temple Hill is a priority school, and this is this is this is our um, our strategy to turn that school around within the two and a half year period. Do they work with both the special ed and gen ed teachers? They work with all teachers. Mr. Shaw? Will there be an accounting of the time on task in district? Will, will there be um, reporting or who, who would monitor the time given the expense? The, the, it will be monitored by, we have a, a grant facilitator that was hired that we approved last month. Uh, Mr. Schuss will be overseeing the implementation of the grant. Mr. Schuss will be responsible for monitoring all of the implementation of the grant on site, who will then coordinate with our grant uh, funded program department, who will, between the two of them, execute the timesheets for, for the PET. Thank you. More questions on that? My next item is the resolution to approve an overnight field trip to Albany for the <coughs> wrestling championship, which occurred on February 21st through the 23rd. Uh, funding source is General Fund Athletics. Questions? I'll look at all. Okay. Next item is a resolution to approve overnight field trip to Webster, New York for the state swimming championships February 28th through March 2nd, 2013. We'll go to the last one and then we'll ask open questions. That's going to take my time. <laughs> uh, resolution to approve overnight field trip to Ithaca, New York for the state track meet March 1st and 2nd, 2013. Questions on those three? Sue. I just think um, maybe we should, I, I have no trouble approving this now because they've already been, but uh, maybe we do something with policy so that they can put in a blank that you know the child's name's not on it, so that we're approving the fact that if somebody's going to go to the state wrestling championship that we would approve it, mm -hmm. you know, with, without the child's name there because this is after the fact. Right. And, I mean, what if we did, you know, they went up there and they had an accident or something, you know, they, you really should approve, you know, I don't know if we have to do through policy or that. Or I think it's on our policy agenda meeting for tomorrow. Okay. Gotcha. We're, we're right on. Thank you. Next item is a resolution to approve overnight field trip to Orlando, Florida for the Ameritier National Cheerleading Championship, March 14th through the 19th. Questions? Resolution to approve overnight field trip to Armont, New York for the New York Math League competition, April 12th and 13th. And February 21st through the 23rd. Questions? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Next item is a resolution to approve overnight field trip to Cornell, New York for NFA students, May 1st through the 3rd, 2013. That's the Sherpa Club General Fund. Question? Judy, you have a question? Yeah, I, at first I didn't get it, but, but obviously it was Joker Club, they can't help. I was just surprised, you know, Cornwall. You know, um, why didn't they come home? Didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that was not going to work. Right. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. With this particular item, we 
have two uh, teachers who are attending a state ed recognized uh, training, and the teachers are uh, have the ability to participate in the uh, development of the phase one ISA slot exam. Um, they were selected to participate in that. Um, that that I believe is occurring this evening. So we would like you to authorize that. There's no cost to the district, as well as the other items that are on the conference request. So we need to add that to the agenda, correct? Yeah. I have a motion to add item L to the agenda for this evening. So Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Now I'd like to um, take a vote on the resolution. Item L. So Questions or comments? Judy? I'd just like to comment on the fact that I think it's a nice honor for these teachers to have been selected. And I hope when something like this happens that they are recognized in some way. Because it brings honor to us as well as to them. Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Madam Vice President, I'd like to add another item for consideration of approval this evening. It's for a field trip to Paris, France. Can we all go too? <laughs> Can I add the uh, item M for this evening? Questions or comments? Do you want to elaborate on that a little bit? Uh, has, there been a, has there been a review of the insurance uh, that covers this for the district? No. Uh, that, that should be reviewed with our insurer. And also, um, if it's arranged through a company, very often they have insurance and they can name the district as an additional insured on their policy. I believe we have that documentation for you this evening. However, this trip goes March 21st, which is next week. So we do meet on Tuesday night. Um, so we do have some time to uh, pull that together and get this to the uh, insurance company for review. So I, we can wait until Tuesday night if that's the request. Is that the preference? Um, I, I think if you have a consensus, you could wait for the vote for Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. so if that is the case, then you have the assurances that uh, you should have. Okay, then we're going to take a consensus instead of a vote. Sue? Yes. Bill? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, next agenda item is Assistant Superintendent of Finance. Oh, I'm sorry, Judy. Uh, a point of information. Uh, it has nothing to do with my approval of the trip. But the, the last sentence on the first page of, of the explanation uh, makes a statement that I find perhaps mystifying. <laughs> be interested in an explanation. It says there is no other trip in the building in the district, actually, that is all inclusive and properly exemplifies the demographic here at MFA. I, and, and I'm just, you know, I mean, I, I think there's a lot of wonderful stuff to be found in France. <laughs> but I'm not sure that they have the demographic that represents all of MFA. You know, so I, I, I was just intrigued by that statement. So maybe Mr. Forge can get back to me. Okay, Mr. Forge? Thank you, Madam President. First item is a resolution to authorize payment of property tax refund pursuant to court orders. Uh, we have the first one for Mid Valley Mall, <clears> that amount of 602000 dates back to 2006-07 school year. We have another one for the Newburgh Mall uh, on Union Avenue there. That's 1.13 1 
uh, $1,139,500. That dates back to 2008, 2009. And then we have another one for AA Food Systems in the town of Newburgh at $7,071. And Cobell Limited Liability Corp in the town of Newburgh for $5,806. Questions? Simple. Uh, Mr. Pacella, this is because, this happens because they're assessed, the assessor in, in the town, it's mostly the town of New York. Well, these are for the town of New York. But the ones that have come forth, most of your town. No, they've been all well, over. The bigger ones have to be in the town because right. they have the bigger businesses. Is, is it because they're being assessed too high? They're, usually? Well, when they were originally assessed in 2006, 2007, it was probably my belief that the assessor assessed them correctly. Maybe we should send them a letter saying, you know, maybe you should go around and assess people a little lower so the school district doesn't have to constantly pay money back. Well, I think they they have particular formulas that they follow according to New York State assess values. Yeah, but they must not reassess very often then. Well, I'm not sure that that's the case because the the equalization rate comes in and equals up equalizes their assessed values. So I, you know, I can't certainly answer for the assess, assessors of each municipality. I just the limited knowledge I have of the assess the assessment process is that each house is assessed, and certainly the town of Newburgh has not been assessed in a while. Right. Um, and there's good and bad to that. The city of Newburgh, obviously, you know, has been reassessed and they're at one hundred percent value, and that ended up being a little bit bad for some people. So it, it's 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 good for some and bad for others. Unfortunately, this process of this court order, anyone can assess, can grieve their assessment. And certainly we get hit by large assessments. We certainly are aware of what happened at Dynergy. We're fortunate that it's not in our district, but it is in the town of Newburgh. Yeah. Um, and no assessor in the world could have seen that diminished assessment from their assessed values. Um, but yeah, we're, we're in constant contact with the assessors. Okay. I mean, we feel this yeah. big as does the town because they don't just grieve the school tax, they grieve their assessed value, which trickles down to their municipal taxes. So this is, this is gonna be felt twofold for town and Newburgh residents. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Mike, um, on the A and A food systems, and the DBA partners, Oops. the uh, A and A food systems, DBA uh, Perkins restaurant. That restaurant hasn't been opening. I couldn't tell you how many at least 20 years. Well, I'm not sure if this is the old Perkins, which is now the Benora Re Italian restaurant, or it's the Perkins on Union Avenue. Mm -hmm. They're looking at 10 and 11, so I, it's definitely not 10 and 11. No, the Perkins on Union Avenue up by the mall. Yeah. It's it could be that one. Could be. Okay, I'm thinking of that. Yeah. The old Perkins you're talking about, I, w I was working in when I was 14. <laughs> I'm quite familiar with that building. Yes, I know. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the Perkins on Union Avenue yeah. because they do have the bakery and it is A&A &A Foods and it's not part of the Menorah Group. Thank you. Anybody else questions on this? No. Item B is a resolution to transfer funds one million seven hundred thousand dollars from the tax Ferrari reserve to the general fund. Obviously, the cover these assessments. Makes me shudder. Questions? Right now, the balance I'm estimating at two million four hundred thousand provided we don't get other assessment, uh, assessment reductions for the remainder of the year. The board has transferred um, 2.45 million, or will transfer 2.45 million with this approval. We started with 4.8 million, and we are down to 2.4 million. Ouch. No questions? Okay. Item C is a resolution to transfer funds, $969,738 from the capital fund to the debt service fund. This amount is the leftover uh, bonding that we have from the Bales Gate uh, and Gidney Avenue roof bond projects. 
uh, where we borrowed a little bit more than the actual project costs, we're required to give it back. This will go to offset our debt payments uh, for the upcoming year on our current debt. Questions? Item D is a resolution to accept the building permit. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. No questions on the bills? Um, next on our agenda is the uh, Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources, Mr. McLemore, will be filling in for Mrs. Langer. Thank you, Madam President. On the Human Resources agenda, items A through D, we have home teacher appointments, we have professional um, return from leave of absence. On the civil service side, we have appointments, we have retirements, and a current employee who has passed away. Questions, anyone? Yeah, I have a question on the home teaching courses. I assume we have more teachers, so there'll be more students on the home teaching, so we need four more teachers. Or is that four? No problem. That's, that's four. four. Is that right? No, not necessarily. I, oh, I believe that they, they just fill out the applications uh, for <laughs> that particular position. Oh, really? Yes. So that doesn't, that doesn't mean that we, that we need them at this point? Not necessarily. It's almost like a substitute applications. Anyone else on that section? Yes. Change the status. Professional change the status. I assume that that one is a Resolution E is the professional chain of status. Okay. Princeton, it's all yours. <laughs> well, I assume where it says uh, sub, the regular sub for number three. But that's a sub teaching assistant? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. When it says regular sub, that means a regular sub for teaching assistant. Well, what happened is that that particular person was. Um, was a, was a sub aide, but the IEP called for a teaching assistant. So this individual was called, recalled, um, and they were in there for this period of time. And so if they're in there for a semester or longer, then we contract them. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Anyone else? Resolution F is a resolution to rescind the appointment of Board Resolution 022613J, Item 1, um, and approve the Spring Athletic, athletic Coaching Appointment as listed. Questions on this? item is a resolution it actually it's a it's a resolution but it's going to be a, a resolution for a tenure for your approval for next week for a person who uh, will be coming up for tenure no questions okay that concludes my items
Okay, the resolved that the board hereby recesses into executive session for the following purpose, for the employment history of particular individuals and for, and for the matters leading to employment of particular individuals. The board will not be taking action after executive session. Thank you, that concludes the workshop. He said he's... Oh, second someone? Questions, comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Thank you.